Alright. Alright. Make things on now. Hi guys, I'm Ryan. I'm 30 years old and I am from the third largest city in West Virginia, Parkersburg. 30,000 people. Third largest city. Uh, a little history about me. I'm married, <coughs> excuse me, to the uh, uh, to a wonderful woman, a very understanding woman, and she has to be understanding to put up with me. Uh, let's see. I have uh, two children, two beautiful children. I have a three-year-old daughter and a, a nine-month-old son, both of whom I hope never have to deal with, with this. Uh, let's see. I've had Tourette's since I was six years old. Uh, it was a typical case of uh, your parents not knowing what the heck you're doing, so uh, they just tell you to quit it. Stop it. Quit it. I got that a lot. I spent many a nights uh, actually waking them up from my, my very loud vocal tick, and I would bite my blanket and, and try to keep it quiet, but, uh, but, but I couldn't. So uh, they, they actually used the, uh, the doctor to uh, threaten me at one point. You know, if you don't stop it, we're going to take you to the doctor. Oh, if, you know, if I'd have known then what I know now, I'd have said, heck yeah, let's go to the doctor. This ain't right. So, uh, you know, this went on for, for a number of years. And uh, through middle school and high school. And unfortunately, fortunately, I, I, I wasn't made fun of too much. There were, there were a few people that, 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 that did, you know, want to single me out because of it, but they were, they were few and far between, and, and that was the case in high school as well. Uh, and I, I didn't get my, uh, my official diagnosis until I was uh, 27 years old, uh, just shortly after I was married. And uh, I, I, I have Tourette syndrome, and I have obsessive compulsive disorder, and I have anxiety and depression. And the, those are all comorbid, of course, of the Tourette syndrome. Uh, they they run together, you know, and it causes quite a bit. Uh, let me tell you. And uh, but uh, sticking to the Tourette's. Uh, you know, I um, I worked in radio. I still work in radio, but I worked in radio for a number of years behind the microphone in a padded room, properly, uh, uh, hiding behind a mic. So, uh, that was great. I mean, simply put, that was great because I could dick you know, freely. You know, there were windows on both sides of the... Uh, both sides of the studio, so if somebody walked by or was sitting in there recording or something like that, then I would uh, oftentimes excuse myself and go smoke a cigarette or go to the bathroom or something, you know, until they were done or whatever. But uh, now I am an account executive. I sell airtime. Uh, I obtain uh, cl clients, uh, which means I talk with a lot of business owners. And I write copy and record spots and that and then that sort of stuff. So uh, it's it's a much more person to person type radio job than the one that I had had before. So you know it it, take, it takes some adjustment and it, and it does. I I've I've had to put into play what I have done since grade school. Really stifle it. You know, I, I, I can stifle it for, for an amount of time. Everything except the eyes. The eyes always have it. Uh, and, and so that's, that's a telltale. But uh, it, it's just different being out in the public more. My car is my sanctuary because after I'm done with a meeting or, or, or with, you know, whatever I'm doing, then... Uh, I can go to the car, and it'll be my, it's my sanctuary. I can just drive down the road and just, nah, 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 just you know, I can't even imitate myself. But uh, it, I don't know how I can drive sometimes, but uh, I do. It affects me from my head to my toe. 
uh, largely motor, a uh, small portion of it's vocal, uh, and, but it comes in the form of kind of grunts, and I force the air out of my lungs a lot, and I tighten my abs. Uh, not exactly the best feeling in the world, but my wife seems to like it because uh, it shaved my abs. <laughs> if anything good comes out of Tourette's, I guess I have nice abs. But uh, it's uh, Tourette's Syndrome Awareness Month. Uh, that's the reason I'm making this video, because normally I wouldn't be caught dead behind a camera. Simply put, because, because of yeah, this. Uh, but I felt compelled to uh, make a video just stating my case, a little history behind my Tourette's, and you know, some of the things that come along with it, like the OCD, and that sort of stuff. And, uh, and ma mainly dispel the myth that Tourette's is the cursing disease. The media loves to portray it in movies and in news and that sort of stuff as, as the cursing disease. And uh, it's not. Uh, I mean, 10% uh, of people with Tourette's blurt out obscenities. The, uh, the, the, the remainder, uh, uh, just it's motor and it's grunts, it's vocal, and it is vocal. But uh, you don't normally blurt out words and stuff. Uh, that's really about it. That's about all I got. And if I have, if I have advice for anyone with Tourette's, it is uh, take it one day at a time. I mean, that's all you can do. One day at a time. I've done it for thirty years. Twenty-five of them in this condition. Uh, so it can be done. There are severe cases, don't get me wrong, severe cases, debilitating cases where, where you can't work, you, can, you can't do anything. That is that is rare as well. Uh, but just just keep keep your head up and uh, when you encounter, when you have an encounter with, uh, with, 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 with someone ignorant, and, and, and I'm sure you all have, uh, turn it around on him, and, and uh, I don't mean the, the, I don't mean hit him in the face or anything like like you feel like you want to do, but uh, use it as an opportunity to educate somebody uh, because you know it, it might make a difference. You know you might open up someone's eyes. They might not be so critical of the next person they come into with some sort of disability. So just uh, be yourself. Be who you are. <laughs> That's all I got. Thanks for indulging me.